there was a man who uh, <clears throat> came to somebody and he was having a conversation. Two men were having a conversation. And uh, the young man was, you know, excited about life. Right. So the old guy said, I got a question for you, young man. Mm. Young man said, what is it, old man? He said, what do you plan to do with your life? Mm. Young man all excited about life says, for me, I got great plans. Mm. I plan to graduate college from an Ivy League school. And when I, when I get this Ivy League degree with the Ivy League debt, amen, uh, <laughs> he ain't said that. I just threw that part in there. When I graduate this Ivy League school, I plan to go down to Wall Street and work for one of the biggest firms with the business mind I'm going to have. Mm. The old man said, wow, great, great. You're going to go and work for the business firm. He, can I ask you another question? Mm. <laughs> you remember that guy that used to live by us <laughs> in Cambridge? Can I ask you a question? <laughs> I think I think he was the guy. <laughs> Amen. That's an inside joke. <laughs> so the old man said, can I ask you another question? The young man said, sure. He said, and after you do that, what's going to happen? He said, well, I'm going to make me a lot of money. I'm going, mm. I'm going to buy me the house that I dreamed of. I'm going to take care of my wife. I'm going to get me a family at that point, and we're going to live in this big old house mm. in a deluxe apartment in the sky. <laughs> Amen. And always said, wow, big family, kids and all that, and then, and then big house. Well, can, I ask you? can I ask you a question? <laughs> yes. So the young man's beginning to get annoyed. I said, sure, what is it? He said, and after you get the big house, what? He said, then I'm going to buy me a yacht, and I'm going to buy this, and I'm going to do all this. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to retire. My firm is going to be the greatest. Everybody's going to want to invest in us. We're going we to influence and affluent the world. <laughs> that didn't make sense, but we're going to be affluential, influential people mm -hmm. and change the world. And, and then, then I'm going to retire. And I said, then, then. All right, cool. He's going to retire. Mm. Can I ask you a question? question? The man said, sure. What is it? He said, and after you retire, what you do? He said, I'm going to play golf. Mm. He said, golf. Okay, golf. Can I ask you a question? Then what? The man said, well, then I guess I'll be old by then, and then I'm just be getting ready to die, and then I'm going to die. Mm. So the old man said, then you're going to die. Yeah, you're going to die. Can I ask you one more question? Mm. And the young man said, what? He said, and after you die, then what? See, there was a lot of planning in that young man for mm -hmm. the now, mm -hmm. but there was never a thought of the eternal. Yeah. The Bible says that it is bounded up in the hearts of men, eternity. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about the fact that God makes all things new. Yes. Every human being on planet Earth, there's a sense in us that yeah. something is wrong. Yeah. The world is fallen. Mm. That sense that you feel of a fallen world is accurate and very true. Yeah. The thing about why we love superhero movies or we're attracted to good stories is because they always present a hero yes. who overcomes the evils right, of the world. Right. Well, I want you to know that there is a real deal hero yes. and his name is Jesus yeah. who has overcome the world. Mm. Today, I want to go to the word of God. And in the word of God, I'm going to go to the book of Luke chapter 16 mm -hmm. to show you on Friday, if you were here, we talked about there is an afterlife. Right. But today I want to go a little further to show you some things about this afterlife mm -hmm. that the Bible tells in a parable. And I pray that you are blessed today. Let us pray over the word of God as we delve in together. Father, your word is blessed. Yes. I'm already preaching already, God, and I pray that somebody's already fired up. Yes, Lord. We make so many plans. We fix our credit. We yes, buy houses. Yes. We fix our social media platforms. Yes. We fix our uh, families. We fix everything. But the one thing we fail often to do is to think about what happens after I die. Yes. God, you didn't just come that we can have houses and cars, mm -hmm. but you died so that sin would not reign, so that, behold, you make all things yes. new. I thank you that this is not all there is, and I'm grateful for that because the, the world that we live in is filled with hate, mm -hmm. filled with depression and yes. suicide and evil and yes. God, all we got to do is turn on the news for a half an hour mm -hmm. and, and, and God, we will see all that is happening from yes. poverty to sickness to famine to pestilence to plagues yes. to wars to yes. rumors of war yes. to hatred yes. to God, Lord Jesus, just dissension. Yes. 
Father, oh God, yes. I thank you that behold, you one day will make all things new. Amen. Bless your word today yes. to the listeners, wherever they may be listening from, whichever part of the world. And cause them to be transformed by the glorious gospel like only you can. Yes. In Jesus name. Amen. amen. In the book of Luke chapter 16 verse number 19. There reads a story there of what we call the rich man and Lazarus. Mm. I am a rich man with a rich life. Two ri well four rich. Yeah. I got a lot of kids since then. <laughs> this ain't that rich man. This, that, that would be me. But this is another rich man. Amen. This is what the word of God says in verse 19. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. Yeah. Lived in luxury when, Sister Sherry? Every day. And he was dressed in purple. Amen. Now, that's very significant because purple is a, 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 a it, it represents rich, wealthy royalty. Yeah. This ain't no ordinary man you're dealing with. Yeah. This is a prestigious man. Yeah. This is a man that many of us would look up to. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. This is a man, no doubt, hallelujah, who we all would aspire to be. Right. This is the, 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 I would call some names, but no. I don't want to, I ain't <laughs> asked you to call no name. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I don't want to put those men in this cat category for right. the sake of being judgmental because mm -hmm. I don't know anybody's lifestyle. But this is a man, no doubt, who wears the best, mm. drives the best, yeah. looks the best. Mm. Uh, he is what oftentimes we are told to aspire to be. Because wealth, for some reason, automatically gets an automatic pass mm. that this is what life is about. Right. Just because somebody has purple and fine linen mm. and live in lamp and luxury every day, we automatically give them platforms in our lives. Yeah, Very dangerous. Yeah. Because one thing I've learned is that uh, 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 material wealth does not equal spiritual wealth. Yes, yes. Neither is spiritual destitution equal uh, 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 physical is an, in, uh, an indication uh, by what you don't have, yeah, right? Yeah. That you can be uh, uh, physically poor but spiritually rich. Yeah. That your situation does not determine your status with God. Right, right, yes. Somebody say glory. Why is that good? Because if you're watching me today and you're living in your car. Mm, yes. If maybe in a future date you didn't watch this live and you happen to stumble upon this broadcast yes. in your car homeless and all you had was your phone and an mm. internet connection i want you to to know today that the god we serve is not only uh, uh saying that whosoever believe me mm. but he also says however they believe me mm. uh, what do you mean by that pastor rich whosoever means anybody yeah. black white it don't matter what your background is god can redeem Deem them all. Right. But it also also saying not only the whosoever, but however, whatever condition you might find yourself in today, right. poor, broke, busted, disgusted, turn over on the other side, woke mm. up on the wrong side of the bed this mm. morning, living in a highfalutin society mm. or the lower class. Yeah. It is not only whosoever, but however, yeah. the grace of God can find you and change yes. you. Your situation does not equal blessing. Right. Blessing, hallelujah. You see, some people feel things have to happen in order for me to be blessed. Mm. I want you to know that the believer already knows the greatest thing has already happened. Yes. And nothing greater will ever eclipse that. Yes. What is that, you might ask, mm. Pastor Rich, so that I may know what it is. Mm. It is the beautiful cross. Yes. When Jesus hung on it, yes. he was bruised for your transgression. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He was bruised for your iniquity. Yes. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, yes. you are healed. Yeah. Healed from the power of sin. Mm -hmm. Healed from the oppression of sin. Yes. Healed from the depression of sin. Mm -hmm. Healed from poverty and lack and everything that the enemy would try to tell you. Mm -hmm. Now this ain't a 
wealth and, and health and prosperity message. But it's healed from every voice. It is healed from the lies of riches. Yes. It is healed from the lies of lack. Yes. It is healed from everything that would plague you from living life more abundantly. Right. If you don't know that joy today, yes. then you need to say like my good brother David, restore unto me the joy of your salvation and renew a right spirit in me. Ah, gosh, I yes. feel like preaching yes. today. I wish I had a church. Somebody say preach, preacher. Yes. Somebody type preach, preacher. Somebody in your living room shout out preach preacher hallelujah. I don't know what you thank yes. God for hallelujah but when I look around at the world hallelujah you know I like where I live hallelujah yes. I love the fact that I can easily access the water in the back and yes. uh, go and just relax and hear the water mm -hmm. ah, it is good to live in such a nice place mm -hmm. I love the fact that I have a car I can drive right. hallelujah I love the fact that God has blessed me but you know what don't those aren't the things that I rejoice for. I, I'm grateful for the many benefits, but I'm grateful for one that it out eclipses all of those. Right. What is that you might ask? You see, the enemy, hallelujah, or life in itself, not just the enemy. Oftentimes we give the devil yeah. too much credit. Life in itself can touch those things. Mm. The pandemic hit. You could have lost your job and lost your wealth and lost your home. Uh, 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 somebody just smacks into your car while is parked on the street and believe me that has happened to me many times and next the car is gone the house is gone and what you thought was great in your life now becomes a problem in your life and and those things can be touched but there is a thing that the enemy can't touch yes, hallelujah yes. that is my salvation yes, hallelujah yes. there's a thing that life and no matter what comes can never touch and that is I've been redeemed by the precious blood of oh, Jesus yes. you could touch anything around me yes. but you can't touch what the cross Hallelujah. did for me I am saved yes. I am bought with a yes. price my eternity is secured yes. I am more than a conqueror yes. nay in all these things touch whatever you want I can still rise above it yes. because greater is he yes. that is in me than he that is in the world yes. hallelujah Ah, hallelujah. Somebody say preach preacher. preach, preacher. And the Bible said there was a rich man. Be careful today that you don't automatically give a celebrity because they got money and fame, a platform and a voice in your life. Yes. Consider what is being said. Hallelujah. Yes. Before you consider the platform that it is coming from. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm convinced today that people don't care about content. They care about platform. Mm. I can see two people say the same thing in society yes. and one get ostracized while the other one gets a pass yes. and I say to myself what's the difference in the message mm -hmm. oh it's the platform right. people pick and choose who they want messages from yes. hallelujah and it's dangerous hallelujah it is a dangerous thing when you know it's a, a father a mother understands yes. this yes. especially when you have children sure. you can tell your children a certain message mm -hmm. hallelujah and they could ignore ignore you and then they go and they hear the same message yeah. elsewhere and they come back and say mom dad I got an epiphany you know what I ought to do and then they tell you the exact same thing you sit there and you say why I ought to <laughs> you hit them with a little bucks bunny you know what I'm saying why I ought to you know what I'm saying you just you, just, you hit them with a you know uh, 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 that's all folks you hit them with a, you hit them with a little looney tunes because you just feel disrespected yeah. the thing is is that they have chosen as children that you don't it, 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 the, the familiarity the familiarity yes. makes I'm sorry kids I ain't pointing to you because y'all know what time it is y'all better listen to me hallelujah come on smile with me a little bit why I order amen but but the, the familiarity makes them not want to receive the content from you and so they go to somebody else who's on a, a different platform yes. that they respect and receive the same information people do it to preachers yes. uh, there are many preachers struggling at this time because they don't have the glitz and glitz they don't have, uh, I want you, if you're a preacher watching me today, keep on preaching. Yes. Hallelujah. God didn't call you to compete or yes. be anybody else. Yes. God called you to preach the yes. glorious, oh, come yes. on, oh, gosh, yes. I feel like preaching. And I, I, I didn't plan for it That's to go right. this way, but yep. it's, it's, it's going to go this way today. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They still with me today? Yes. God yes. didn't call you. Hold my phone sure. too. 
You might have to get out my way wearing all this nice <laughs> outfit today. I might knock you. No, don't go too far. I need you close. God didn't call you today, Mr. Preacher, to compete. Right. God didn't call you to be anybody else. He called you to be you. Yes. He called you to preach the gospel. Yes. He called you to preach it to two, a few, a million, yes. how many, whosoever has yes. ears to hear. Yes. And in a time yes. like this, people will go and disrespect the familiarity yes. of their local preacher. Yes. They local preacher who would pour into them. Yes. They local preacher who would do their weddings. Yes. They local preacher who would do their 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 their, their whatever. Yes. Who would sit and counsel and pray and mm -hmm. pray them through. But disrespect the platform because it isn't as this other preacher's platform mm -hmm. and go listen to the same content on somebody else but disrespect what God has placed yes. in your life yes. here's my point I'm trying to talk to my preachers out there if you're yes. preaching don't you be discouraged yes. keep on believing yes. keep on preaching who has an ear to hear will hear mm -hmm. God will bring we didn't we never got into this right. for fame right. we never got into this to be so celebrities yes. we never got into to this to, to exalt our own names we right. got into this because we were once sinners yes. and we were redeemed and by his blood we are made whole and this Jesus is still the answer for the world today yes. we got into this because the hope we found yes. is what God has called us to declare to others yes. and so like Paul we learned that if I'm in a high position or right. a low position right. godly contentment is great, great gain. gain so preach on yes. preacher keep on going yes. even if the people that you sometimes preach to hallelujah disrespect you because your platform is not what society says mm -hmm. a platform to be ought to listen to you know as long as you declare the word of the, the Lord, yes. you're doing the right thing. Yes. Hallelujah. Be careful today that you don't put people, because of their status, in a position in your life of authority that you are, are listening to their content, but their content is godless. But they get a pass just because of their position. Yes. Dangerous. And that's only verse 1. We're going to be here a while. <laughs> Put up my scripture again. <clears throat> there was a rich man, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. He was rich, dressed in purple, <clears throat> fine linen, and lived in luxury, not one, but every day. Mm -hmm. And his gate was, uh, at, at his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus. Now, I'm going to break that down for you in a minute. Why that verse is so important. Mm -hmm. This Lazarus is not to be confused with the other Lazarus that was raised from the dead. dead. Mm -hmm. It's not the same Lazarus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's go on. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus. And then the Bible tells, the Bible gives the description of the rich man. He has linen, purple. He's in luxury every day. And here's the description of the beggar. He's covered with sores. And he's longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. So there's a man in super poverty in front of this rich man's door. And he's longing to eat whatever this rich man would give him. And apparently this rich man is not taking notice at all to mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. The Bible takes time to show you here. Well, let's read on. Let's finish reading. The time came when the beggar died and angels carried him to Abraham's side. Do y'all see that? Yeah. I'm reading from the NIV. Amen. The rich man also died and buried in hell where he was in torment. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. And besides all this between us, and you, a great chasm has been fixed. On earth, there was an economic chasm between them. Right. 
But after, <laughs> there's another one. So that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. 27, he answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. This man is begging in the afterlife. He is being tormented. He said, tell my brothers, send somebody, go back and tell my brothers. In verse 29, Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. The man said in 30, no father Abraham, he said, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. And he said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced. Even if someone rises from the dead. And someone did rise from the dead. And the world still lives as though there is no afterlife. There are a couple things I want to point out to you here. And I'm going to let you go. Amen. Amen. The first thing I want to point out is that there is another world beyond this one. The Bible talks about a world in an afterlife where angels carried the man. Angels are real. The supernatural world is real. In that supernatural world dwells the almighty God. Where he can dwell in any world he wants because he's God. Yeah. But there is another world and often... Times we overlook the fact that this planet earth and the material world we live in is not all there is and that you are a being not made just for this world but for the world to come mm -hmm. the bible says that in this world hallelujah there are angels there is god there is an afterlife and notice that abraham is there the saints who had gone before right. hallelujah from our message the other night when God says I am the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob hallelujah I am the God of the living and not the dead meaning that death is not the ceasing of existence it is the separation from physical body but it is not the ceasing of existence that's why when you read in the garden the day you sin you shall surely die you ask yourself what what does that mean death there does not mean a cessation of existence right. so when God said the day you eat of the tree you shall surely die he didn't mean you will cease to exist he meant death as in separation will occur. Mm -hmm. And the minute they sinned. Hallelujah. They were separated from the presence of God. And not only were they separated. But eventually the wages of sin is death. Yes. And they would be separated bodily from this earth. But the gift of God. God is eternal life yes, through Jesus yes, Christ. Yes. Make no mistakes about it, ladies and gentlemen. That's what separates Jesus from every philosophical idea, yes. from every religion. Yes. He is not claiming to be a concept. Right. He is not claiming a philosophical argument. He is saying to you that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody can get to this afterlife with the Father lest they come through me. Yes. Now it's either that is true or Jesus is out of his mind. Yes. And Jesus begins to tell a parable here in which he begins to expound and say there is another world. That this is not all there is. That's the first thing I want you to know. That the world, the supernatural world is very real. Yes. That's a reason to pray because God will hear your prayers. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. The other thing I want you to notice is that death comes to every man. Yes. It don't matter your status in life. Mm -hmm. You cannot buy your way out of death. Y'all yeah. hear what I'm saying? Doesn't matter how poor you are or rich you are. There is coming a day when you will die. As I thought about the coronavirus and I thought about the fear that grips the heart of men, a thought came to my mind, Sister Sherry. I said, what is it about this virus that is gripping our hearts? And I concluded it is that 
People are dying from it. Yeah. Here's the thing. We are fearful because Corona is threatening to take your life. Right. Can I give you a truth though? Mm. Whether it's Corona or whatever else, right. the thing that you fear, death, will one day be inevitable. Jesus is not telling you that you are Enoch. <laughs> you are not Elijah. You will not be translated. We, in this body, the wages of sin is death. death. You will die. You will one day leave the earth. My young brothers and sisters that are watching, that sounds like an eternity away. I know. I sat in your shoes. Right. I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. I was once young. Mm -hmm. I was in my 20s. And I thought age will never come. Mm -hmm. I thought I could never be middle age. Them years are far away. <laughs> they came faster than a brother bargained for. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen? Time creeps up on you. Every day given to you is a blessing yes, from God. Yes. Uh, when you don't, you, 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 I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. It is not if, it is when. Mm -hmm. Death is coming to every man and nothing you can do will stop it. It's a sobering reminder that listen, if there is a longer time, and I love the analogy I gave. Life is but a vapor. It's like a water droplet compared to an eternity, an ocean. And the ocean is still small compared to eternity. Take the ocean a billion times and put it together. It still would not even equal a droplet comparison to eternity. Yes. That's how big eternity is. And God says that men die and then there is an afterworld that you go to. In this afterworld, those whose life uh, lived a certain way on earth will determine where they spend eternity. Right, right. For the rich man, I'm getting ready to point some things out to you here. For the rich man, hallelujah, the Bible says this about him, that on earth, and I want to take my time here to explain something to you. Oftentimes when Jesus got ready to preach and teach something, he would use what is called parables. Right. And in using parables, he would often uh, 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 use these stories to point out something greater. Mm -hmm. In this story, he's showing you several things. Number one, the, thing, the, 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 the first two things I showed you, that there is a supernatural world, that there is death to everybody, mm -hmm. that status doesn't determine if you live or die, you're going to die. Okay. And then finally, he's showing you the way you live on earth is going to determine where you spend eternity. Right. That's the Bible. The, Jesus spoke a lot about the afterlife. Mm -hmm. He spoke about it with the man who, like I said, built his barns and yeah. Never once stop to consider what would happen tomorrow. Here's the other thing that Jesus is saying. He's saying that for those whose life pleased the Lord and lived in accordance with his will, those that, that, that didn't think that the earth was all there is, they end up in a place with eternal joy. Those that refuse to, to put God in his rightful place ends up in a place where the Bible uses this word, torment. Torment. Now we could go further there. Many people say the Bible don't teach about that. I don't know what scripture I'm reading today. Hallelujah. And people have even argued, well, this isn't about that. This is just, uh, 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 and they try to make it social issues right. and all this other stuff. I want you to know today that, 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 that it ain't got, this is Jesus speaking plain. And in this parable, unlike many others, here's the thing that you need to know. Why many people thought this is a story and not a parable? Because unlike every parable Jesus has ever told, right. he has never used the name of a person. Right. He always said there was a certain man, right. a certain farmer, a yes. certain lady, a certain, uh, 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 a certain widow, a certain this, a certain... And he would always say a certain but never gave a name. The only parable Jesus ever gave a name was the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Mm -hmm. And I want you to notice what he does. On planet earth, he tells you the status of the rich man. Mm -hmm. 
but he knows the name of the poor man. Right. Yes, yes. They didn't catch that, mm -hmm. Sister Sherry. Hallelujah. In other words, in earth, if you're not careful, you will be deceived to live to think that the meaning of life is in attaining a certain status. Matter of fact, what does social media ask you when you jump on? Update your status. Tell us your profile. Tell us what you're up to and what you're accomplishing. I want you to know that there are many people living to up their status. Mm -hmm. But there's a difference between the world knowing your status and God knowing your name. Lazarus did not have the status of the rich man. But what he had going for him was that heaven knew his name. Hallelujah. And when the roles were reversed, status meant nothing to God. What meant to God was is your name right. written in the Lamb's book of life? Yes. Does heaven know your yes. name today? Yes. And I want you to be careful, Church City USA, friends and family, that you don't get caught up in the shenanigans of living to, to let the world know your status. Mm. It is filled in our culture. Yes. And the world don't know my name. And, mm. and your name in the lights. And yeah, yeah. bright lights. And to be famous. And to be this. And to up your followers. And your likes and your views. And let everybody know me. And, and look at what I'm. I'm an influencer now. I am. People, people who ain't got no influence. Self-described as influence. Wow. I am an influencer. You know, this is the word. And everybody's in this rat race to up their status. Don't get me wrong. Right. Do business and do it well. Right. Do what you got to do to make sure you take care of your family. But don't you ever do so much that you forget that, that there's a God who rules and reigns in eternally and you better make sure you are up in your status with heaven yes, too. Yes. Okay. I could imagine, hallelujah, day after day, this rich man is so busy that he doesn't even know real life. Mm -hmm. He's so pampered. He's so everything. He's got everything he wants that he doesn't notice this poor man there every day. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing about Here's a truth that I've discovered. I have traveled this world, Sister Sherry. I'm getting ready to close. I said that before, right? Mm -hmm. I've traveled this world. Mm -hmm. When you come to wealthy societies such as America, and you come to educated places such as America, for some reason, they become so godless and empty over time. They become godless and empty. And sometimes I wonder, why is that? And one day, I'm telling you now, this ain't a scripture. This is just my conclusion. It seems like with knowledge comes pride, mm -hmm. comes a sense of I know better. With wealth becomes a lack of dependency on the divine and you start feeling your own self. Mm -hmm. You start thinking that it is you who blessed yourself. And so you become so consumed with all that is happening that you overlook the fact that every day you need God. I've seen it. Yeah. It, it, it. Listen, America used to be a place that preached to every place else. Yeah. Now everybody else is coming here to preach. Yeah. Missionaries are coming here to tell us about sin. We used to preach to the world. Now the world is coming here. Why? Because we've become so godless. Uh, all types of lifestyle goes. And you know where it comes from? Those that we've said they, they are allowed voices and platforms because they're celebrities. Yeah. So now that they, just because they made a good movie, they can tell us about life. Yeah. You could act, but you ain't. Yes. <laughs> or you could rap. But I'm not going to live my life according to you. Right, right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Or oh, you can make a beat. Yeah. But I'm not about to lose my whole Christianity because you, 
you did a dope beat. Yeah, yeah. It ain't even mine. I ain't rap on it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have some fun, amen. Yeah. Listen, here's the point I'm trying to make. With wealth, the danger, with education is the danger that you no longer think this makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're so busy. And so I could imagine this poor man, because I've seen it, Sister Sherry. I've seen people who don't got the luxuries of church. Mm -hmm. I've seen people who don't got big lights and glamour sound and system. other, no sound system, yeah. no, no music. Yeah. Drum is a piece of bucket. Yeah. I've seen that. Mm -hmm. I've seen sound system bullhorns, mm -hmm. people shouting, a tamarine alone, walking to church barefoot, yeah. falling on the side and coming into the church. Mm -hmm. And church is packed yes. and people worshiping yes. because they know that there's a God. Hallelujah. And I want you to know today, this is not a message. If you're rich, you need Jesus. If you're broke, you need Jesus. Yes. Every man needs Jesus because they both are deceptive. And the man said, if a man rises from, he was in such torment. And I just got to say this, y'all. For those who are perpetuating that there is no torment after life, this is all there is. I want y'all to look at this man. He was in severe torment, yeah. severe torment mm -hmm. that he begged. He said, listen, if this man could just a droplet of water, mm -hmm. a droplet of water, just to soothe, just for a second, just, just a temporary soothing mm -hmm. of this torment, a temporary soothing of this torment that I may for a second, mm -hmm. please, please. He said, I can't. Life is over. The choices you make in one life, you make your choices, then your choices make you. He said, well, can you at least send Lazarus back from the dead, rise him from the dead? Mm -hmm. It is so incidental right. that the man that rose from the dead before Jesus' yes. name was Lazarus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I ought to leave this building, <laughs> hallelujah. Right. The name Lazarus mm -hmm. means God is my helper. The rich man's status is mentioned on earth, but his name means God is my helper. Yeah. It gives you an indication of him. Yeah. And the man said, if you could send him back and raise him from the dead, and a Lazarus came back from the dead, and they still plotted to kill Jesus. Oh, yeah. And Jesus went to the grave, and Jesus oh, came back yes. from the dead. And men and women today still act as this is an ends to a mean, as this is not a book about life eternal. This is not a book on how to, listen, don't get me wrong, the principles in here will bless you, they will change you yes. and transform you, yes. but ultimately this is about getting you back restored to God who created you. Amen. Amen. This is a book about that. Yes. And I want to show you something today. As you live, mm -hmm. as you live, are you living a life that you're not preparing and chasing everything for today, but you're taking time to make sure that God is first in your life, mm -hmm. first in my fi finances, first in my marriage, first in my family, first in everything I do, mm -hmm. anything my hands find to do. Yes. God, may your will be done in my life. Mm -hmm. Are you a person that sees God after the fact? Mm -hmm. Because you ought to live for heaven to know your name. Yeah. And you don't got to wait till you die to find out if heaven knows your name. I'm going to close with this. Y'all know I love me some Apostle Paul. Mm. You know that afterlife can know your name right now. Mm. I don't know oh, about yeah. you. I don't want my name to ring bells. Listen, I would love, I would love, hallelujah. I, I got to say like Dr. King, I would love to live a long life. Longevity has its place. Hallelujah. Yes. And I would love to, hallelujah, to see God bring my ministry to levels that people will be blessed and transformed. But I tell you this, hallelujah, if the world never gets to know my name, hallelujah, I'm content. But if God never recognizes my name, and if he says to me, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, 
I never knew you. If the demons don't got no respect on my name, hallelujah. If the devil sees me as one of his minion, hallelujah. If the way I speak helps his cause. If when I live, I bring divisiveness. If when I speak, hallelujah, I bring all that he wants, hallelujah. If I'm on his side and he doesn't even recognize my name, it's a problem. You say, can that really happen? I want to take you to a story as I close. I wish I had my church today, (laughs) God Almighty. There's a story in the book of Acts, hallelujah. And I'm going to ask you to put my last scripture up in a minute, Sevy, so get ready. The Bible said, hallelujah, that men and women in the book of Acts were seeing all the exploits that the apostles were doing, namely brother apostle Paul, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Paul, hallelujah, went to town and cities. One time there was a girl who the people profit off of because she was a a, a, a psychic, if you may may in modern day language. And whenever she saw Paul, she would say, these men are men of God. For they are, these men are the men of God. And night and day, and Paul got tired of it one day and say, you're going to stop man of Godding me. (laughs) And he turned around and he said, in the name of Jesus be free and he cast the devil out Mm -hmm. Paul did that wherever he went he would pray and the demons would bow to the name of Jesus well some people hallelujah saw that Paul had a little bit of status so they thought themselves Paul is getting famous and popular. You see, they wanted Paul's status. Mm. They didn't want Paul's anointing. They wanted Paul's uh, notoriety. They didn't want Paul's story. They wanted Paul's glory. They didn't want to go through what Paul went through. You see, Paul didn't just get that anointing, hallelujah, overnight. Paul had to be shamed and embarrassed. Paul was kicked off his high horse. Paul, the Pharisee of Pharisees, was brought down to nothing. Was no longer known by the Pharisees as a great man. Mm -hmm. Was not even trusted by Christians. They didn't even want to go next to him when he got saved. Nobody even wanted to check on him. Hallelujah. Paul had to preach. Paul was then uh, uh, preaching to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. When he went to those Gentile town, they mocked him and ridiculed him. Him. They flogged him, beat him, stripped him. Yes. He was shipwrecked. Friends betrayed him. Nobody would came. They backstabbed him. They left him out to dry. Hallelujah. But Paul had an anointing. Hallelujah. Yes. And whenever he showed up to town, hallelujah. Not just his status preceded him. Paul even said it like this. When I came to you, I didn't come with eloquence of speech. And I didn't come to show you all that I've accomplished. But I came to you with power yes. hallelujah and that power when he declared it hallelujah it broke bondage yes. it caused prison cells to be shaken yes. Paul's praise in a prison cell was so that you're gonna like this sister Sherry can I preach a little yes. bit yes. Paul in the in the prison cell begun to praise mm-hmm. Paul had that type of praise mm-hmm. that not only broke his own shackle right. but those yes. next to him it broke yes. their shackle yes. Do you want a praise? Oh oh, gosh, I got to calm myself because I'm on the internet and I'm going, you know, I don't know. Uh, (laughs) You know, it's that type of praise. Hallelujah. When you see when your name rings bells to God, you you get that type of praise that it not only breaks your shackles, but anybody connected to you, it starts breaking the shackles. The mothers from the old school understood this. Mm -hmm. The praying mothers that would pray for their crazy children that were hung up on drugs. All of a sudden they came on. Of drugs they came out of prison yes. people started being transformed yes. because the, the, they, they had a, a name hallelujah that God recognized yes. because they had a story hallelujah and so people saw Paul's status and wanted his status but they didn't want to pay the price anything in life that God is going to do for you is going to come with a price hallelujah you're going to have to walk alone but listen to me today church city USA they, they saw Paul and they said we want the status mm-hmm. And so they said, what is he doing? There's a lot of people who go going to imitate you. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Come on, Sister Savannah, make some noise in this church today. <laughs> you know, imitate. I told my daughter yesterday, I said, imitation is the highest form of flattery. Because her and I, we have similarities. The child doesn't like to admit it, but she is more like me than a, in a lot of ways. And some of you are watching probably don't agree with that. You'll soon find out. <laughs> Hallelujah. But she is a lot like me in a lot of ways. And one of the things is, you know, as a human being, one of my things is I don't. Don't steal my swag right. and try to act like it's yours. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And so we were having this discussion. I said, I've learned over the years that when people take from you, uh, imitation is the highest form of flattery. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know this, that they can take from you, but it will never be you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so, 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 I know some people are watching you. You hate, hallelujah, when people speak your ideas, steal your, your, your swag, mm -hmm. steal your concepts and run away and try to take what they, you know they took from you and try to build something else with what you've done. Mm -hmm. and, then, and, then, and then you can get upset. Don't get upset, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because watch what happens. There were men that looked at Paul and said, we're going to steal everything he's doing. Mm -hmm. So they watched, they took notes. <laughs> yeah. They said, when does he pray? What happens? Oh, he prays in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when we pray, we got to make sure we say the name of Jesus you can say the name but you don't know who the man is hallelujah and so so they said okay we're gonna pray in the name and the Bible talks about seven sons of a priest by the name of Sceva mm -hmm. they said let's go try this thing yeah. so they started going around praying for people mm -hmm. they said in the name of Jesus who in the name of Paul preached we command you to go devil would just <laughs> <laughs> yes I, I, I've, I've, listen let me tell you something I've had experiences casting out devils mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're doing you gonna get embarrassed because the enemy will embarrass you. The enemy will strip you and let everybody know you ain't got no anointing. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so they, they, this is what they prayed. The Bible said they prayed, in the name of Jesus who Paul preached, come out. Ain't nothing working. So they said, why isn't this working? Watch this. The, the devil then begun to speak to them. And I want to show you something as I close. Put up Acts 19. This is what it says. This is what the Bible says. Acts 19, 15. One day the evil spirit answered them. <laughs> the evil spirit answered them. And this is what the evil spirit said. It said, Jesus I know. Now, I understand that part. Hold on. Hold on. Put it back on me. I'm expecting the demons them to say, Jesus, I know, because he is the Christ. He is the Lord God. In, you know, he's the son incarnate. He's the third part of the triune nature of God. He's eternal from everlasting to everlasting. Ain't a demon or a devil that don't know Jesus. Whenever they saw him, they said, why have you come to torment us? It is not our time. Right, they, right. they already knew they had a time that he would shackle all of them. So I expected the demons to say, Jesus, we know. Right. The part that baffles me is the second part mm. that the, the, the devil said. The devil said, Jesus, we know. But Paul wasn't divine. But they said, and Paul, I know. And Paul, I know. Yeah, yes, boy, I feel like yes, tearing this yes, living room yes. up. Yo, one of y'all better learn to play an organ in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> he said, Paul, I know. Mm -hmm. In other words, Paul's name yes. is ringing yes. bells right. in eternity. Yes. And he ain't even there yet yes. because of how he's living currently. Yes. And then the demon said, but who are you? And you know what that the, the devil did? Mm. I know you know. <laughs> the devil then whipped them yeah. seven boys and stripped them. Yeah. yeah, and had them running around, you know, yeah. looking a little funny. <laughs> yes. That's what the enemy does. Here's my point to you. My point to you today is, what are you living for? Mm. Are you living for the droplet? Or are you living for your name to ring bells? On earth, nobody might know you, but if God knows you, you're in a good place. 
The grace of God can meet you wherever you are today. The things that you chase in life can sometimes cause you to miss the reason you were put here. The chase is not for the created, it's for the creator. I'm going to say that again. The chase is not for the created, but for the creator. That, that got to go somewhere. Hallelujah. The chase is for the creator. When you find created things, they do what they do and then they leave. That's it. Mm. But when you find the creator, he's the sustainer of joy, peace, and yes, everything. Yes, yes. How does a man end up in torment? Mm. I must conclude that a man really has to have a heart that does not want Jesus at all. It's a mystery to me. But then again, I look around and I see people can read the words of Christ and still reject it. Mm -hmm. When you hear the voice of the Lord, do not harden your heart. Yeah. Make sure you are aligned with the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're not living a life where you're only trying to benefit your now, but you're trying to benefit your eternal life. Mm -hmm. I want to see all of you and all of us in a place in that new Jerusalem yes, yes. when we will dine and sup with our Lord and Savior, yes. who on the Last Supper said, one day we're going to do this again. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus, pray with me today. Mm -hmm. Say, Father God, Father God I, ask you I ask you to come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive me, Forgive me of every sin. Of every sin. Like the name Lazarus. Like the name Lazarus. God, God, you are my helper. You are my helper. When I'm weak, when I'm weak, you're strong. You're strong. Father, Father, I trust you. I trust you with everything I got. With everything I got. And I just pray. And I just pray that God, that God, you would transform me. You would transform me. There's a lot of books. There's a lot of books that can inform me. That can inform me. But it is your word, but it's your word that, transforms that transforms me. Transform my mind, transform my, mind my, thinking, my thinking, my entire being. My entire being. Allow, my name Allow my name to be written, to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Lamb's Book of Life. That, God, that God, I will be there, I will be there to, worship you to worship you when it's all said and done. It's all said and done. Forgive, me Forgive me of every sin. Every sin. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for watching. Do us a favor, y'all. Run to our website. Yes. Sow into us. If we've been a blessing to you today, sow into us. You can give these ways that are on the screen. Cash app, Church City USA, the dollar sign Church City USA. Or you can do it through Zell, Church City USA at gmail.com. Or Church City USA.com yeah. and you can just give there. Mm -hmm. Or go buy one of our uh, 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 winter products. One of the t-shirts or one of the sweatshirts, I should say, that is up on there. We've got about three more months of winter. It'll get to you. If you purchase it today, you'll have it before the week is out to be able to wear. Take pictures of it. Yes. Free shipping. Exclusive deals on there. The reason we do that, we don't tell you how much to give. But it is your giving. We've sowed into you. Sow back into us so that we can continue the work of the Lord mm -hmm. to pull men and women out of the flames mm -hmm. and to bring them into the joy that is found in Jesus. Yes.